All right, what's going on class? We have finally done it. We are past some of the theory, some of that cerebral brain sweat work. And we're actually gonna start talking about components. This section of chapter three, we're talking about our first component um, and an extremely important component. We're talking about resistors. So in this video, we'll ask the question, what is a resistor? Why do we use resistors? We'll talk about how we can identify and read resistors. Um, and then we'll talk about resistance and currents a little bit. Or excuse me, resistance and circuits a little bit. This is a very short video. Even though it's an extremely powerful and important component of the circuit, this is just a primer and introduction. We're going to talk about many variants of resistors very shortly, but consider this a brief greeting. All right, so what is a resistor? A resistor is a passive electrical component for which the primary function is to limit the flow of electrical current. A key word here, passive. We're adding a component into our circuit so that we can start to manipulate the, uh, the electricity. We can start manipulating energy within our circuits and our projects. But we don't require any energy itself to make this component do its job. It does it uh, by its very nature. So it is a passive component. So we understand that. We don't require any additional energy, no extra juice to make this thing do its job. This is a resistor. You've undoubtedly seen these components in some fashion when you've opened up any electronics just to play around or take a look inside. They're the most frequently found component in electronics by and large. These are the schematic symbols. I wanted to draw some distinction here because what we've seen before is the squiggly line, which indicates a resistor to us Americans. And the biggest distinction to be made between the U.S. iconology and international iconology, the U.S. image or icon looks more like the internals and actually how the component behaves, which we'll get into in a moment. The resistor image, when you're looking at international schematics, looks like a very rough facsimile of a resistor. Also, this is a great place to point out, anytime you see an arrow superimposed over an icon when you're looking at a, a schematic for electronics, that means it's variable. It's not a fixed value. It can change. And we'll talk about that later on in this video. And last but not least, we know that resistance is measured in ohms and we use the unit symbol of omega to identify resistance when we're talking about ohms in a circuit. So how do resistors work? We saw from the icon, it's that squiggly line and that's a little bit of a clue. So you see, I've got these cutaways of what a typical resistor is. What they are, are wires of increasing resistance wrapped around non-conductive cores. And that's one of the key things. The core has to be non-conductive. This entire package of this component is based around taking the electron flow, the current flow, and squeezing it down, right? I should also point out, though, that when we're squeezing down electrons, it's almost like we're adding friction to the path in which electrons go. Heat is a typical byproduct. All right, so here we have, if we can imagine, our electrons getting squeezed through on one side of the wire. They're starting to pile up there, and on the other side, they're kind of trickling through. It's not unlike what's actually happening. We're taking the amount of electrons, the, the, the volume, right, the current, we're talking about a volume of electrons, and we're cutting that off. We're adding some resistance. We're adding some squeeze to that. And by proxy, we're actually causing a voltage drop. There is a voltage that drops across the resistor. Much like one side of the battery is biased, it's a potential difference in the system inherently just from one side of the battery to the other. Well, when we're looking at a resistor, we're doing almost the exact same thing. We're taking high potential energy and we're squeezing the electrons so not many can go through. And on the other side of that resistor, we have low voltage. We're basically creating a voltage drop just by limiting the amount of current. And this kind of goes in, if you remember, with Ohm's law. Voltage is equal to current times resistance. I want to point out, Voltage is not a product of current and resistance, but a proportional relationship. So if we 
lessen one or increase one, we're going to manipulate the other. And that's exactly why we use resistors. Resistors are the mainstay, the, the, the greatest way that we have to manipulate the flow of electricity in circuits. If we can put a pretty broad stroke to this, when you're using a power source, you say, this is my power source that I'm working with. It's typically not variable. It's 12 volts, 9 volts, 60 volts, whatever it is. And we have this voltage and then whatever inherent resistances are in our circuit based on the components, but we need to be able to have more nuanced control. We need to be masters of our project, and that's why we add resistors. We add these resistors so that we have control over the amount, the volume of electricity that's flowing through our circuit at any given part or in the system as a whole. And if you can understand that part, you'll understand why resistors are so common in our electronics projects and why they're extremely key and fundamentally important to know about. All right, so we got a couple types of resistors. I could probably squeeze in some more pseudo meta types like digital resistors, but I'm gonna give you three main ones that I think are important. And I'll explain a little bit about them and then we're gonna get into the construction of these guys. So number one, the fixed resistor. It is the most common resistor to be found on our circuitry projects. The We call it the fixed resistor because the Resistance does not change, it's invariable, and, and that squeeze that we put on our electrons remains constant. Then of course, contrary to that, there was a need to be able to actually manipulate these things on the fly, and we found variable resistors hit the spot. These are resistors that can be changed either through manual means, mechanical means, or digital logical means. Anytime you've ever touched a knob or turned a knob, you've essentially been using a variable resistor. And the way they work is they have a sliding contact called a wiper, and this controls the resistance contact area. So that's how we can manipulate the flow of electrons, either increase or decrease them for our purposes. And then lastly, these guys are super cool, and we're gonna spend a lot of time with them. I wish we were in person so we can have some really fun projects with them, but they are reactive resistors. And these are resistors that are variable resistors, but they're, the resistance is altered based on environmental variables. Put variables twice in the same sentence with two different meanings. Let's try that again. The environment dictates the amount of resistance that this device imposes on the system. So an, an environmental variable could be anything from sound, light, temperature, humidity, heat, pressure. I mean, uh, there are some really fantastic and genius reactive resistors out there. What we see represented here is a thermistor. And this is actually a resistor that changes the, the resistance value based on the temperature. Resistor, thermostat, together, thermistor. So really cool gadgets, awesome components to play around with, um, and they make for some awesome projects. All right, as we know, all great things can get greater. We just need to put some knowledge and know-how into them. So let's talk about the construction of resistors. And in doing so, we're going to take kind of a walk down memory lane as we look at the early resistor to ones that are most commonly found in more dynamic, uh, technologically advanced components. First being wire wound, this was the original oldie but goodie. Concentric wires twisted around non-conductive cores, more twists with thinner wire. Early scientists found that they could lessen the amount of current by doing so. Uh, I don't know how frequently you'll find any of these in the wild. You probably won't if you look at any anything other than um, niche projects. Right, consumer goods won't have wire wound resistors in them. Carbon composition, also older resistors, similar concept, carbon particles packed around and in between the wire windings, mostly known for somewhat inaccurate uh, tolerances, and we'll talk about those in a second. They were manufactured to have a specific resistance and their gray area of what that could be after they run off the manufacturing line is a little iffy. 
then that led way to carbon film resistors. These are the ones that are most commonly used. If you go to uh, Adafruit or SparkFun or any place where you get these components to work on your home, home projects, which you're typically going to see. The carbon package with two leads on either side. Again, non-conductive core in the middle. They have a, a carbon doped film, so they um, artificially dope this wrapping with carbon so it it and it's wrapped around the, the lead wire extremely accurate in comparison to the carbon composition the their predecessors and they uh, due to this carbon doping they allow some of the electrons um, through but not all of them and they don't have to actually mess with the wire size as much in order to instill a resistance in the system or the circuit this is a lead way to metal film resistors, similar to the, the aforementioned carbon film. They use a metal layer film instead of plastic that's doped with carbon, and they've got higher accuracy, and the, the carbon doping was meant to handle some of the heat exchange. The metal resistors, uh, metal film resistors do a much better job of this, because as you know, metal conductors, not only does it allow the transmission of electrons, it also allows the transmission of heat. So it's kind of like a, a small passive heat sink, same package. Metal oxide film, more durable. The metal's oxidized, so it allows better heat transmission, um, it's better performing, they last longer than the metal film resistors. All in all, just a, a good resistor that's increasing every generation. And then lastly, we've got our foil ones. These, there's a very thin sheet, micrometers thin foil, and it's the highest precision resistance component you'll find in consumer goods. So that's all for construction. So now you know the types that you're going to find and have an idea of how frequently you'll find these and where you'll find them. You should also know that just by looking at them, you can tell a whole slew of information about what they're doing in a circuit. So most resistors don't actually have writing on them, but they use a color code, like symbology of colored markings, and these are clues about the resistance values. If you know how to read these, you can take a look at any resistor and identify exactly what it's doing in your circuit or your system. So the first band going from left to right is the first significant digit. Then the second is the second significant digit. In this image, we're looking at a four band resistors. They go as high as six. And then the, the last band will be the tolerance, that's the accuracy. If you're looking at, let's say, a 300 ohm resistor, it could be plus or minus X percentage, plus or minus 2%. And then the second to last band is gonna be the multiplication factor. And by knowing this and having a little Q, you can take a look at a resistor and see exactly how many ohms of resistance that this component is providing. So here's that Q that I was talking about color chart. They use the different colors of the rainbow to indicate different values and the capability of the resistor. This one that we're looking at here is a six band resistor. For the purposes of our course, we'll probably be, be keeping most of our attention on a five band resistor. I wouldn't expect to see the six band resistor too much in this course. It's an introductory course and temperature coefficient is it's something that's that's more in like the material studies or some of the electrical engineering processes that we're not going to be getting to. All right. So now that you know everything that you need to know about a resistor, let's figure it out. Let's test ourselves here. Here we've got a four band resistor. We have our chart. We know or we have the means to know everything that we need to about this resistor. So let's go through it together, right? Looking from left to right, I see orange, white, orange, and gold. So let's take a gander at this. Orange in the first digit means three. All right, self-explanatory. White, nine. And then because we only have four bands, those last two, the second to last is gonna be the multiplier. That's another orange. That's a multiplier of a thousand. And then our tolerance is gold. That means plus or minus 5% accuracy of what we see here. So I'll give you guys a moment to look over this chart, take a look at the resistor, and then you tell me what you think it is.
All right, I hope you paused the video to figure that out. Let's take a look and see if you're right. All right, so we talked through this already. Orange is three for the first band. It's our first significant digit. Nine is a, a corresponds with a white band, our second significant digit. So we've got 39. We're going to multiply that by 1,000, and we'll know our accuracy is plus or minus 5%. So what's it come out to? This is a 39K ohms resistor, a kil 39 kilo ohms resistor with plus or minus 5% accuracy. And that's it. So you guys are rock stars. You have nailed resistors. You now know all you need to know for the purposes of trying to figure out the capability of a resistor that you'll find in any of your projects in this course. I give you four more fun ones to figure out. Pause the video, take a look. If you need to go back and review that, that the reading metrics one more time, feel free to do so. And I will see you in the next lecture. Thanks, guys.